coming up next on Sledhead 24-7. Test rider Jeff Fisher checked his passport and ego on a road trip to Canada. Fish shares an exclusive behind-the-scenes look at how Skidoo created the game-changing 850. It's a snowmobiler's dream destination. Jeff is on the scene as Sledhead number one rolls out the door. Head for the mountains as some Polaris racers take the challenge to be king of the mountain at the World Championships of Hill Climbing in Jackson Hole. Hang on for highlights from the greatest hill climb race on the planet. We're going to Jackson. Tucker Hibbert walks the walk and backs up the duck on the snowcross track, and the T-Train follows suit all summer long. We caught up with Team 68 on a Make-A-Wish outing. And we'll grab a little windshield time with the one and only Brett Turcotte. Head into the backcountry with one of the great riders and outstanding characters in the world of snowmobiling. Get ready for the greatest show on snow. Sledhead 24-7 starts now. everyone and welcome to Sledhead 24-7, your show about everything snowmobile. I'm your host, Chelsea Scorich. Our mantra every episode is to ride, rate, and review. We've put together quite the crew of test riders to help you find your perfect sled. And here we go, we're going in. We're gonna go in and see some cool stuff getting made. Can't promise you what we can show you, but it's cool. On the assembly line right now is serial number one. That could be yours, or better yet, one of mine. It hasn't quite hit me yet being here in this factory. We've only seen a little bit of it, and it's already overwhelming. The parts, uh, the process they go through to build a sled, and we're just seeing a little bits and pieces first, then we're going to go see the rest. This is fantastic. I still have goosebumps going up and down my arm, seeing how things are done and assembled. I mean, how are things for your first run tonight? How are things going tonight? This, this, this evening is very uh, special evening for me because it's the first night and the first time of produce this Gen 4. And this room is the first time to start this engine. Check it late, this late this evening, start the first engine with you. So we're over here, we're overlooking the whole assembly. Um, we went through and saw how the tunnels are put together, the mufflers are put together, the pipes. And now we're watching the whole machine get put together. And it's, uh, Henry Ford would be proud. It's very automated, boom, 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 assembly line. It's really cool. From paper to, to, to prototype to development, it's about four years. So we started with the consumer, getting the insight, getting their needs, then prototype different variation of the solutions, and then mass production as we speak. It's about four years. So the time it takes to assemble a full sled is about four hours on the assembly line. From, from a chassis, from a frame, up to in the crate, ready to be shipped, it's about four hours. It's getting a little more exciting here. It's off the assembly line. It's coming into the test center now. What I'm actually doing right now, I have to get all my electronics off of me because I get to go in and start the very first summit, Gen 4, that got built. We like to hear the motors run. I don't know, something about that just gets you going. From high tech to history, as one of the first 850s comes off the line. ski 850, number one. We've passed all the tests, flying colors. Now it's going down the line. A couple minor little touches to get it ready, and then it's going in the box into a dealer near you.
We've seen everything. We've followed his sled from the tunnel to the building the exhaust, all the way through putting the suspension, track, engine, panels, you name it, the full assembly line. We followed it through, and now we get to watch it go in the crate and wave it goodbye. You know, just seeing them, how, how big and how massive this factory is, uh, the people, everybody here, the passion there is for the sport, the passion of doing the assembly, it's, it's just a really neat feeling. It kind of gives you goosebumps just walking through here and, and seeing what a new line and how it's going. Jeff Fisher shows his appreciation and admiration of history. After all, this is the place where one of the very first Ski-Doo snowmobiles was built many years ago. And the timeless tradition of Ski-Doo continues. Still ahead on Sledhead 24-7, a full report from the World Championships of Hill Climb. We're tracking Team Polaris, and Sledhead Shane Lewis is standing by with the highlights. Brett Turcott shares some backcountry riding secrets as he carves deep powder and beyond. But first, lace up the sneakers with 10-time snowcross champ Tucker Hibbert. He's all about making dreams come true on and off the track. Sledhead 24-7 is brought to you by Amsoil, Protect Your Weekend, by Polaris, Terrain Domination, Articat, Share Our Passion, Skidoo Snowmobiles, What Matters Is What's Next, FXR, World Class Outerwear, and by Ram Trucks, America's longest lasting pickups. Welcome back to Sledhead 24-7. I'm your host, Chelsea Scorridge. Over the past few years, I've had the opportunity to announce at ISOC and watch some of Tucker Hibbert's greatest accomplishments. Arguably, he is the best racer in snowcross history, but there's a lot more to his story. Tucker Hibbert is known as a racer who talks the talk, but walks the walk. Number 68 is number one and a champion on and off the track. Last summer, Tucker did indeed walk the walk as he and Team 68 hit the trails for Make-A-Wish. Well, we're hanging out here at Minnehaha Park in Minneapolis for Make-A-Wish Minnesota's Walk for Wishes event. It's a pretty exciting day for us. We've been working super hard uh, for a while now to build up our team and, and raise money to donate to Make-A-Wish, so it's a, it's a big day for us. This event is all about fundraising and, and getting everyone together to support a good, a good cause, and um, it's been awesome, you know, to see people uh, be so generous and, and really be willing to step up and help uh, make, make some kids' wishes come true, and, and we're excited to be a part of it. The site for the walk? The natural beauty of Minnehaha Park in Minneapolis, framed by the famed Minnehaha Falls, Tucker and Team 68 set out for a walk that was for far more than exercise. Today's goal, raise money and awareness for Make-A-Wish. We've got the 10th annual Walk for Wishes. We're so excited to have over 700 people come out to support the wishes that we do in the state of Minnesota. Walk for Wishes is the largest wish granting organization in the country. And so the walk is one of our largest fundraisers to make sure that we can grant every wish for children. Make-A-Wish serves a unique and vital role in helping strengthen and empower children battling life-threatening medical conditions. It was great to kind of see what kind of response we would get and it's been overwhelming. We have the best fans in the world and they're generous, good people and to be able to come together and celebrate was just awesome. On this day, all sorts of characters showed up to help make the walk in the park, well, a uh, walk in the park. Tucker, he's always been proud to support Make-A-Wish. Recently, Tucker and Team 68 helped make a dream come true. Nick's wish was for an Arctic Cat snowmobile, but this 14-year-old got more than he could have ever imagined. But Nick's wish got even bigger when Tucker Hibbert jumped in and got into the mix. Suddenly, Nick was at Amsoil Championship Snowcross Track and meeting, hanging out with, and riding with his snowcross hero, Tucker Hibbert. Yeah, hate to say wow, but 
Wow. Meanwhile, back at Minnehaha Park, Tucker Hibbert kept on keeping on, walking the walk, all the way to the finish line. The people and, and uh, the amount of money they were able to raise the grandkids' wishes, so, you know, I would say it was a huge success. A lot of fun for me, you know, just hanging out and enjoying time with a lot of friends and family and meeting some new fans and, and uh, being able to just to enjoy the day and not have such a, a crazy, you know, a crazy schedule like it is for me normally on race weekends. This is way more relaxed and a lot of fun. It's 1,500 feet of sheer madness. We're talking about the Jackson Hole World Championships of hill climbing. You know why it's aptly called Snow King Mountain. When it comes to backcountry riding, Brett Turcott is at the top of anyone's list. Brett is ready to take you along for a ride. Stay tuned, Sledhead 24-7 is back in a flash. Welcome back to Sledhead 24-7. I'm your host, Chelsea Skorish. Each week we want to share a great riding destination with you at home. This week, we're heading to the Jackson Hole Hill Climb with Polaris. Take a look, for this is the absolute ultimate in snowmobile hill climb. And the ultimate agony of Welcome to Jackson Hole, Wyoming, an aptly named Snow King Mountain, a Lambeau Field of Hill Climb. With a 1,500-foot vertical rise, this hyper-challenging mountain has certainly earned its mind. We got the biggest sleds, the baddest sleds out here, putting everything on the line, wrecking them and going over the top. It's just an incredible day. The event is staged by the Jackson Hole Snow Devils. Back in 1975, the club started a small hill climb contest that grew and grew into the World Championship Snowmobile Hill Climb. Today, the four-day event draws over 10,000 fans and more than 300 snowmobile hill climbers from all over the U.S. and Canada. The 40th annual was held in March. and We tagged along with a group of Polaris hill climbers. Jackson Hole is Hands down, the Super Bowl of our sport. Uh, it, it's awesome just to even get an invite to come race here. Uh, you can't just enter and decide you want to show up. They handpick who they want here. And you really just get the best riders here, plain and simple. Uh, guys that just can do stuff that are amazing. And the hill that we have here at Jackson is just unreal. Uh, the challenges that it presents uh, and the satisfaction that you can get from going over the top of this are absolutely unmatched anywhere else we go. The town of Jackson Hole sits at 6,237 feet. And at that altitude, there's plenty to catch your eye as a group of nearly 400 volunteers help keep the mountain in check. This is a catch net, catches the sleds when they come down. We have a natural, they all come to this one spot. Just, it's a miracle. Meanwhile, in the pits, Polaris racer Aaron Buchelman prepares for an assault on Snow King. For Aaron, he hopes 13 is his lucky number today. Uh, the Polaris this year, they have their new Axis RMK chassis, which have just been working absolutely awesome for us. Uh, our guys on the 600s have just been dominating the 6 and 700 classes. And our new 800 axis is just amazing. Uh, the way that those things can handle these bumps and obstacles that we get with hill climb racing and the power that they have just is such a huge benefit to us. These Polaris racers know the Snow King is always a challenge, no matter what class they are in. You get a good feel for the hill and new lines that are developing or changing because anything with snow, when you get sleds with traction going up it, the lines change so quick. Uh, you can have a perfect line picked out and 
literally in two or three riders, it's completely gone and changed. Uh, you just get the high horsepower and lots of traction and it just blows the snow away and rocks and stumps and all kinds of stuff show up. So it's kind of nice to be back to back and get them a little bit closer. Uh, the more runs you get to make, honestly, the more of a groove you kind of get to start to get in. So it's nice running five. Just watch as this Polaris shows who is king of the mountain as bunny ears and body English show the way. Earning the reputation as king of the mountain means plenty at aptly named Snow King. For the results of the Jackson Hole Hill Climb and for info for next year, please set up a link at sledhead247.com. When Sledhead 24-7 returns, Brett Turcotte treats us to a day in the backlands with some extreme backcountry riding. Sledhead 24-7 is brought to you by Amsoil. Protect your weekend. Stud boy. Traction with an attitude. Straight line performance. Ziegler Cat. Exceptional service backing the best equipment. The U.S. Air Force. Aim high. Welcome back to Sledhead 24-7. I'm your host, Chelsea Scorch. Up next, we're going to hang out with the one and only Brett Turcotte. Now, Brett is simply an amazing rider, but one piece of advice when going riding with Brett, hang on. From snowcross to the X Games to extreme backcountry riding, Brett Turcott has been pushing boundaries for as long as he's been riding and racing. And today, he continues to ride in that direction. Aside from X Games and aside from you know, Red Bull Snow Boundaries and all those little events, this is you know, what you can find me doing during the week and just having fun with my friends, really. So. You know, it's, it's a really good proving ground and training spot for me, and it really just makes me a better rider all around. So, yeah, open bowls, deep pow, tight trees, big jumps, we got it all. I've ridden here for 20-something years, and I'm still finding new terrain to challenge myself with, challenge new products with. And, you know, that's where I came just across this 141 kit this year is like absolutely insane. I wish that I was riding it all winter long. Uh, doing like wheelie 360s and continuing on lines. And like crazy tight tree lines. You know, it's, it's amazing to take something from bone stock, change a couple of things on it, and just go ride it and not have to worry about it. It's, it's pretty awesome. I'm starting to look outside of the box, stuff that I've you know, ridden in the past, I'm looking at hitting different ways. And, I mean, we're still going to get a fluke storm. I know I've had some of my deepest days, like the first week of April, so. The terrain here, with it being so close, and town being so close, and having cell service, and being able to just communicate, it makes really good testing grounds. Really, you know, every time that we go out, we're trying something different, and, you know, some days are better than others, and that's just the reality of mountain riding. It's, it's never really a set program. It's not like a program you sign up for school and it's the same every day you're dreading it it's, uh, it's crazy out here put my new zebras front end on because it's jump season and I like to have that 38 inch front end and some nice new shocks tomorrow's a whole new day pretty excited to get out and start testing it it's something that I've been wanting to do for a while Rolling out, a little bit of a late start, but uh, it's kind of the last day that everybody's going to be riding together, and everybody kind of had a good time last night in the shop. Showed up a good time with the Turcot compound. Now we're going to go ride trees. The best way to uh, describe that is we're all just going to go get stuck.
putting some spring pow miles on and just trying to have some fun before the season wraps up, but it's long from over and this is uh, BC, man. It's where we live here. Here's an update on Brett. He is now part of the Articat Black Cats. They are a professional backcountry riding team that utilizes all Articat parts and accessories. We're going to see more from Brett and the Black Cats later on this season. That's all the time we have for this week's episode, but make sure you check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and at sledhead24-7.com. Next week on Sledhead 24-7, we'll ride, rate, and review the Timber Sled. One part motocross bike, two parts snowcross, and completely fun. This little camera has had huge impact on all action sports, and we'll have the latest from GoPro some cool features, and we'll try to explain why our test rider did not see this tree. Good news, he walked away and drove the sled back to camp. And spend a day at the world's largest Arctic dealer, a day trip for all serious cat fans. Country Cat in Sauk Rapids, Minnesota is a dream destination. Those stories and a tech tip from Amsoil. See you next week on Sledhead 24-7.